All right, guys, we are back. Potato Boys versus SK Gaming. Now, Potato Boys is not going to land. These two teams are locked in. The question is, can Potato Boys close the door on SK Gaming's first seed? That's right. If Potato Boys wins this game, SK uh, will take a second seed, or rather, uh, out of this, a sixth seed overall going into regionals. Now, if SK wins, they will force a tiebreaker against uh, not Agilitas. Almost said Agilitas. Aquila. Aquila? Yeah. Aquila. 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 Fuego. Yeah. Jean Quay ban. SK Gaming will ban out that Jean Quay. Potato Boys won't be able to play it, but I don't know. I feel like it's not really in their wheelhouse anyway. Freya banned away because reels. Yeah, that's true. I mean, take take it out. I mean, honestly, yeah. it, it does a lot of damage. There's no reason to have it. Geb going to be taken away as well. Now that's interesting. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Because first of all, Potato Boys don't actually value Geb that highly for Which is whatever reason. Anyway, especially with Durgius. But also, why not just first pick it? Badger has performed so well on Geb last weekend. But Nuwa first pick will be the choice. Yeah, once again, Nuwa makes it through. Uh, Favoring Nuwa here instead of the Geb. Vimana gets banned out, which I like because anything that can be used in Joust should probably be checked. Yeah. yeah. Except for Kronos. No, you don't. Yeah. Don't pick Kronos. Don't pick Kronos. Unless you're Boosh. Did you know that at the LAN, they mm -hmm. were up 2-1, and Boosh picks Kronos. Mm -hmm. And when they asked him why, like, wh what was it? Were you looking for the comp? Were you looking for this? He's like, I just thought it'd be fun. Yeah. <laughs> That's Boosh. He just Damn. thinks it would be fun Cog to red. ruin your hopes and dreams. <laughs> Thor and Ra locked in for Potato Boys. So some nice synergy there. Yeah. Uh, will be interesting to see where they actually end up putting that Ra. But the Thor definitely adapting in the jungle. Yeah, yeah. So left side, SK Gaming going to be hovering onto Athena, uh, despite my months and months and months of protest, as well as Apollo, because Global Ults are amazing. Global Ults are very, very good. Yeah, you rarely see a team without any Global Ultimates. We're not going to see one in this game. So, Athena locked in. There's three, actually. That's three Global Ultimates. So far on That SK makes Gaming. Athena very strong. Are they going to go for the full house? That's the question. <laughs> so, that would be three Global Ultimates and two characters that can't leave the base. <laughs> I was going to go with three Globals, two Semi-Globals, but, you know, either way. On her will be locked in for Potato Boys, and we'll see how Suntouch does on that one. Typically more of a Rom and Apollo player, but we'll see how he does. Oh, wow. Akumba Karna lockout coming out from SK. A shot to Durgius there. A lot of his god bullets have been taken away. Yeah. We're going to see a hover onto Poseidon. Arrow likes his god, I guess. And honestly, if, if there's any time to play what you like, it is here in the last game for the hey. Potato Boys. Hercules in the solo lane. That character's broken. Think we're going to see a meditation? I, I hope so. I know it's you do. It's really good, Kret. Damn it. I'm going to accept your opinion, but I don't have time to play Smite, so I can't prove it right or wrong. <laughs> Vulcan will be locked in by SK Gaming, and Zeros has played that in the jungle before. That's true. And it's shockingly effective, so good maybe clear, that'll be... Good clear, safe clear, good damage. He's good really ganks. good at Vulcan for some reason. What I like is he has some of the best deep gank in the game. Sure. Going way beyond the opponent, putting the turret down to cover the option, hitting with the backfire. That way, if you run into turret range, yeah. you will take damage. Yeah, if you set it up, it can work out. We're going to see the Kabrakan coming out from Durgius. He is diamond on this character, so if anyone can do it, he can Kabrakan. That's a slogan. Anyway, Potato Boys, we'll see how well they do in this coming match, whereas SK Gaming on uh, on Maniac and their Hercules, will they be able to go for the tiebreak? I, I love the Hercules pick, especially into this comp. right? If they rush Hercules down, have you ever tried to gank a Hercules? It doesn't really work. It doesn't work. On top of the fact that he's going to have Apollo covering him, he's going to have Athena covering him, he has Nua covering him, and he has a Vulcan in the jungle. Like, Lord help you if you drop that kill. All right, well, heading into game, let's take a look. SK Gaming out of the order side of the map. Reels on Apollo, laning with Badja on Athena. Zero's Jungle Vulcan. You want to hear something funny? Sometimes I can't tell the Hercules and Derbule skins apart in Spectator. That is pretty funny. <laughs> it doesn't look that different. <laughs> Which one is it? Oh, it's the Derpules. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> See? See? <laughs> yeah. Maniac in the solo lane as Derpules. And in the middle lane, it'll be Captain Twig on Nuwa. 
That's right, and they're going to be going up against Potato Boys, whose lands, Hope, have uh, kind of been crushed here, but they still have the ability to help out Aquila, uh, their Aquila, their uh, Challenger Cup brethren, by taking down SK and locking them into the first seed. That's going to be adapting in the jungle with Thor. Proxy QQ coming in, uh, looks like, to the solo lane with a normal solo god, Ra. Uh, Suntouch and Dirgy is going to be going on her. Kabrakin, a very, very potent lane. An arrow rounding out the roster in the mid lane with Poseidon. Yeah, so we'll see how the Poseidon works out. I, I mean, with Kokokin getting nerfed, Poseidon and Kokokin have always sort of done the same thing. So when one goes out, the other comes in a little bit more. But right. hasn't really been too popular just yet. So maybe this will be the comeback from the Kraken. Still very powerful ability when it does connect. His Trident is an incredible steroid as well. So has some definite options for... Actually, if you want to do a level 1 Gold Fury, Poseidon is the best mid laner for it. Right there, we saw Reels kind of trading away. Not a good idea. He took way more damage. Yeah. Uh, oh, oh, what, what is... Are they, are they on the ward? Are they on it? They are on it. They are seen. Yet, Captain Twig does not make the adaption here. As Suntouch and Durgius rotate in, goodbye. First blood goes to the Potato Boys. Yeah, Arrow locking that one in, and that should give him control of middle lane. The question is, at what cost? Still right. level one. And they're going to change that by going for the invade. They've got a back harpy and a speed buff to go for. Potato Boys pulling out all the stops. Currently 1-0, and oh, less than a minute. And look at this, they, they steal away the speed buff. They're going to give that to Durgius. Now they're going to the bottom camp here. I don't know how to play Smite anymore, apparently, because this is not the things that you can do normally. SK does know how to play Smite, though, as they're stealing away the blue buff. We'll get that, and now turning onto red. So very good response. Durgius will rotate over, and he's going to use his one. Looking for Batcha does not get the steal, though, and forced to back off. I don't think he was forced there. I think he chose to back off. He could have kept that aggression. Mid lane, Captain Twig not in a great spot. We're going to see creeps cleared up. Oh, Arrow wow. actually takes the hit. Captain Twig getting over aggressive, but getting it a one for one trade right there, kind of in favor of SK. Yeah, I, I would say in favor of SK uh, okay. for sure. Sun just, to Sun get Touch, that kill. just go to lane. Why would he do that? Sun Touch, go to lane. Hey, he's a jungler Sun at heart. Sun he Touch. misses being a jungler. Sun, please go to lane. You just missed six more creeps. He misses being a jungler, but <laughs> he'll be able to get at least some uh, some gold from the archers here. Currently level three, what so not too far behind reels. They're just, I don't even know. Adapting <laughs> is waiting in the wings. We'll be getting the middle lane onto Zeros, who backfires away, and will be fine. Nice magma bomb connection as well. And those are the Vulcan mechanics that are shockingly effective from the SK Gaming jungler. Batch on the left-hand side, though. Suntouch will get taken down. Jerji is in trouble as well. His oh. reels is opening up with Audacity, not finding the autos, though. Yeah, he did enough damage, though, and with Dirgy is out of mana, there's really not much he can do to deter Badger and reels, who still have a lot of damage potential, just barely clipping. I think I would have saved that if I was reels for the clear, but it's not like he's going to gain too much there. All of those were still stripped away in the gold department. Dirgy is uh, not in a great spot here. Well, let's talk about this soul lane where it seems like Maniac has managed to come out on top. Hey. Not quite finding the pull. Driving Strike right has there. the boulder available. Right this there. actually could look good. Boulder comes out. Oh. Big gank from adapting, and you can gank Hercules. Oh, my God. He, right, see, okay. I First of all, I'm going to give that one to Maniac. I love the play. Sure. Too many players think Hercules is stifled once he misses the two. Who cares if you hit the two? Just driving strike them into the yeah. wall. You're Hercules. The issue is that he didn't auto attack cancel his abilities right there. He didn't auto attack cancel into the boulder. He didn't auto attack at right after the driving strike. He waited. He waited too long. Mid lane, Captain Twig in a world of trouble. Not only above the sea level, but directly below it as well as the Kraken comes out and takes a big chunk of his HP bar. Yeah, Arrow just waiting for the setup from the fire shards as, uh, as adapting. Uh, force Twig into trying to buy time. Currently 4-2, to two, so Potato Boy's having a nice little lead, but they're going to need to convert it into a little bit more. First mid-camp spawn comes out, and the Potato Boy's did have control there. Maniac has gone into damage, and I, I don't 100% agree with this. Death Toll, Combat Boots doesn't augment what makes Hercules strong. Sure. Hercules is a defensive monster. Right now, you're building into defense, makes his auto attack stronger, but his scaling, not really that great. That said, with Proxy going into a breastplate, I don't know how defensive you need to build because you're already not going to be threatened by this raw who's not building into magic power just yet so a little bit more of an offensive build could be stronger in lane but um well, well remember if, if you go into stone agaya you're not only building magical defense sure. but you're building an increase in your health pool 
in terms of health and regenerative health. If you build sure. into Mystical Mail, you're not just building physical defense, but you're building damage as well. Right here, he has built a little bit of movement speed, which hasn't been good for him because he still can't hit his twos. That's true, but uh, I mean, we'll see how it happens going forward. Hey, Hercules does have to fight the battle of not being ignorable, right? You have to be able to get in and sort of do your stuff and force them to focus you, but then you also have to strike the balance of not being focusable either. So if he can do that, it'll be strong. Now, a, a gank coming out on the left-hand side. Reels will be stunned. Nice pillar, but the stun does okay. not connect in time. Ultimate coming out from Durgius, and Reels could still be in trouble, but wow. Suntouch just backing off despite having Desert Fury. Did, did you notice the mistake there is he, he put the wall up mm -hmm. and then immediately started the tremors. He didn't block his path off. He should have put himself in a body block position. Yeah. Great serenade. Walked right through it. Reels will be able to fight another day. Well, we're going to take a look at the first two kills of the game, guys. And remember, it was a very, very early gank coming out from Weird Durgius gank. and Suntouch. A very strange gank as well. They waited in the wings, coming out of the left jungle and looking directly for Captain Twig. See, what I don't like about this is, is Twig knew they were there. Yeah. They have a ward. Both of them were spotted on top of it, and he still got greedy. Now, this kill was a little bit more clean. He baits the pressure. He caught him in a great spot there. That front to back was a great gank. Yeah, that definitely was a great gank. Perfect timing because he caught Hercules the moment he committed and was able to keep Proxy alive. But let's head back into the action, and currently deep in the enemy jungle is adapting. Not going to... Oh, he actually did get the speed buff. Ooh, Sneaky. Rough. Uh, adapting actually might have to get out of here. Three people rushing him down. Uh, looks like they're just going to go for the blue buff. Play it safe. Adapting not letting this one go. Uh, actually, yeah, Reels is going to deter him. Uh, great positioning there. They didn't need to split that three ways. They could allow someone to get out of there. Now, Durgy has just used all of his mana. Uh, he is going to be in a real bad spot if he gets caught. It's going to be up to what Sun Touch can do here, as well as Arrow, another great Kraken. Oh, wow, and now turning onto Reels finds Ooh. the oh, oh, teleports in front, so doesn't double tap, but he gets the wall and the Berserker Barrage it will be enough. He didn't need the double tap there because of the way he positioned it, but it still would have been nice to see. See, I, I don't like that that argument. I don't, I don't like the he didn't need it, because if it's there, you should always take oh, it. Oh, yeah, totally. And right there, that is a mechanical mistake, and, you know, I have casted way too many of Cog Red's games to see people drop double taps at this stage. Right. There's a million dollars. Totally. Can't do that stuff. But you, you, you want to give a little bit of credit just for setting up for potential mechanical errors, right? If you're making a play that only works when you do it perfectly, that's a lot riskier than a play with an exit strategy, which is so important in this level of play. In the middle lane, though, that's going to be adapting with no exit strategy. Fire shards Bye -bye. will secure this kill. See you later. Fuego. Fuego. Way go. Sun Touch doing a great job this game, though, uh, keeping himself afloat despite the fact that he's down a kill at about 4,000 gold. Across the way, also a death. We're checking out reels, but only 3,600 gold. Uh, and that probably comes back down to the fact that for the first two minutes of the game, Sun Touch was a jungler. You know what we have? We have a Doom Orb on Nuwa no. in the middle lane. Mm -mm. No, we don't. He is two, three, and oh, I mean, if the Doom Orb gets stacked and stays stacked, it I don't, I don't definitely see what you're can about. do a lot, but, you know, nope. sometimes the Doom Orb just... All right, so 22 stacks is the threshold where it's quote-unquote worth it, and that's certainly doable, but Arrow can apply a lot of pressure to Twig if he plays this properly, especially with the lack of movement speed coming out from delayed boots. Oh, Durgius rushing this down. Will he force Badger? Yes, forces Badger away. The issue is that Preemptive Strike has a much uh, shorter cooldown than the dash coming out from Durgius. Didn't quite get the stun either. Yeah, that is one of the bigger uh, bigger problems with um, Kabraken in general is that you do have rather long cooldowns on your initiation abilities do you wanna, now. Do you want to know the secret, by the way, and why that was a mess up? What's the secret? The mistake was that if Athena just turned around and dashed into him, he would have did damage, he would have slowed, and if he went for the stun, he would have absorbed it with his passive. Huh. How about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Small mistake coming out there, and that's matchup knowledge, and this is something that Durgius can use. And speaking of which, as he goes to the left side, good Athena ult keeps him safe and will deter. Real stays alive once again. And that's exactly how he needs to be using the Athena ultimate, but on the right-hand side, adapting, getting aggressive. Boulder comes Ooh. out. Earthshaker as well, but it's not combo properly. Proxy will be able to create some room, but will it create a kill? Searing Pain connects onto zeros, but not on a Maniac Fire Shards as well. Uh -oh. Or sorry, just the backfire. Proxy will find Maniac on on the way out. See, this is the issue with lack of defense. The movement speed did not keep him up to his target. 
didn't have the regeneration he needed. Hercules falling, is starting to fall behind now. He's 0-2-0, and he's kind of feeding a raw, which is trouble. 1-0-1 yeah. right now has an, with, with this almost a 1,000 gold advantage right now, and that's scary. But the other thing is, this is raw that's building defensively, so in the extended engagements, you oh. do have to be careful. Jerry's will fall on the left-hand side, and so could Bracken retreating into that uh, fiery underworld, but... Watch the play on the left side. If Sun Touch uses his two here for the clear, if the Impale goes through, Reels could just counter immediately. Oh, but he's taking a lot of damage. Oh, yeah. but Fire Shards. Good right. combo, but Arrow coming through. Nice ultimate coming out from uh, from Reels there just to escape the gank. But he ran out of mana, though. Fast? He ran out of mana, though. One shot. Oh, oh no. Dungeus right back in there. Taunt directly back into the shield wall. One shot from the tower. One shot from Reels. Going to do it, and Badger cleans up the kill. A great outplay coming there from SK Gaming. An arrow just getting over aggressive now on the left hand side, adapting once again. Gonna look for the speed buff, but he's got a Vulcan jungle to contend with, and uh, definitely some interesting play around this. Area. They're gonna use a Defender Olympus just to make sure that the speed buff is safe. See, I like that. I like using it as a teleport, getting yeah. back to lane safely. They still lose the boo buff, uh, blue buff. They clean up the speed. Uh, taking a look at speaking of global ults, Nuaz at 36 stacks on her Doom Orb. They're not really exploiting Nua's weakness in the fact that she is the most gankable mage right now. If her ultimate's down, there's yeah. nowhere she's going. I mean, does have beads and ages, but they're only rank one, so repeated pressure from Thor ultimates is exactly what, uh, what Suntouch and the Potato Boys need to do. Left mid camp will go to Beautiful. SK Gaming, right secured by Durgius on that Kabrakin yet again. Getting aggressive in the dual lane, though, is Reels. Uh, both blues on the right side are going to be picked up. Raw just cleaned out his. Is he going to go down to the bottom? Does he have an ultimate? It might be a little bit too late. Oh, just by a, a, a hair, he was able to take that away. Maniac rotating back to lane now. Not going to quite have the advantage. Oh, my God, he's going for it. Well, left-hand side, though, Reels in a lot of trouble. Will be taken down by adapting. And now Badger getting turned on as well by Durgis. Arrow rotating in. Finds the Aegis. Kraken, but finds the Aegis as well, which is a rank three. Now turning it back around onto Arrow. Captain Twig is here. Badja finds the slow and the body block, but Twig gets the kill nonetheless. Five seconds until the ultimate comes up. If Badger can find some damage, Fire Shards is now available, but it looks like Adapting will be able to escape. Yeah, uh, red buff is secured by Potato Boys on the way out, and that's just intelligent play from Adapting. Very strong jungler despite his team's overall performance in the wild card and the challenger cup proxy pulled out of tower rooted and Whoa. taken down the burst from vulcan insane and while that rotation was happening maniac taking advantage in the solo lane is going to clean up this tower a free 500 gold yeah but the gold tree has been pulled by potato boys they could sneak this and it looks like sk gaming has no idea they do now fire shards will reveal and up in the air is Apollo looking for Durgius no, no, and ganking no, 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 him no, no, the lane no. tower? That's not going to work out too well. Does have an Athena ultimate, oh does find God. the kill, and with the 20% damage reduction, able to back away. See, if everyone played Athena like that every game, I would say she's the best character in the game, but we rarely see it. Yeah. Topside, Maniac, no defense, gets blown up by the Thor, and Poseidon combo, no problem whatsoever. Arrow not even phasing that. He didn't even have to use his ultimate. It's been on cooldown for a minute. Probably should not be diving a tier two tower if you're not super tanky just yet. Is going I, so I like the play to go a silver talisman and stop there. It's yeah. a very efficient tier two item, so he can just harden up a little bit without committing fully. And probably going to go into that heavy hammer, which still is very efficient. Arrow uh, kind of getting aggressed on, but turn around. Captain Twig taking some damage, uh, adapting strangely, just stopping his uh, Berserker Barrage, but he still cleans up the kill with a beautiful shot. Nice wall as well, but Durgy is not getting on the side he was looking for. Uh, jumping over, Suntouch going for it. Yeah, Suntouch is going for it, but can he get out of this? His reels is turning on the damage and able to find the kill. Adapting Mez out, takes 226 from the backfire. Durgy is trying to fight and is doing a decent job of blocking for his teammate with uh, Berserk Barrage nice. will be enough to find the kill. Tremors just oh, for a few nice. seconds to keep people in. Proxy on the backside. That was a beautiful wall catching two people right there. Proxy not quite finding the ultimate. Huge Kraken not going to do the damage to Zeros, though, thanks to a great Aegis. He's one shot away and will get cleaned up. A backside Maniac finds Durgius and Arrow. He's going to be putting himself into a 2v1. Has a little bit more defense than he did before. He can maintain this. He's about to get a ton of healing back, but no, he can't get out of this one. There's too much damage coming his way. He gets blown up. Two members still available for Potato Boys, and they're going to turn their sights to the... Nope, not the Gold Fury. One of them is. Okay, there's this the gold confusing. Nuwa on the way. Do they have enough damage for this? They you've took got too long. The, you've got the healing from Ra. 
He's got max cooldown reduction, so he's going to be able to heal a lot and have good uptime. But with Twig diving in, Sun Touch is here as well. Oh, and Sun Touch. Doesn't find the pillar stun. Actually diving in his reels, looking for Proxy. And the Athena ultimate yet again will connect with the stomp. And Proxy will go down with the healer destroyed. Now there's just so many more options to engage. And adapting is the next target. Beautiful shot there. Fire shards is available. He's not getting away from long. Rain right from the sky. Goodbye, adapting. Now Durgius in the mix will be mezzed out as the team disengages on SK Gaming, except Twig didn't really get the memo. He's in a horrible position. Batcha trying to do something, but just getting out of the tremors. The stealth will not buy enough time. The Earthshaker will just oh barely connect God. and turning it around. Twig dies, but he dies for a good cause. Badger finds what with the big one. Sun Touch forced out in the backside. Arrow dies right there. Was That was just Earth Day to me, because everyone yeah. just Thought globally, worked locally, blew everybody up. Quick win right there for SK. Meanwhile, Maniac doing stuff in the middle lane, just getting some farm, pushing up the wave, and he's going to be able to take a tower while his team takes the gold fury. Very efficient play, and that's going to actually add a substantial amount of gold to the SK Gaming coffers. They've got 1,800 experience and about 1,800 gold as well. 15 minutes in, it's not huge but it's starting to become something. Well, they were behind. I mean, they were behind by like 3,000 oh, yeah. gold, and now suddenly they're up by 1,800. There's 3,000 experience right now between them, and this is where things are going to start to get scary because you look across the way, on her, of all the ADCs in the game, sure. probably the weakest in the end game. Uh, Kabrakin can do decent damage, but he, he's slow, like Ymir, in the end game could be in trouble. Sun Touch in a lot of trouble. Reels playing this one close to the chest, still finds it. That wall's not going to help you there, Durgius. Still Steel manages to get out, and the ultimate's down. Arrow's trying to get through, but forced to use his own auto attacks to blow up the wall. The rotation was too late. Free kill right there for SK. Yeah, unfortunately, just SK Gaming able to get that kill, and Potato Boys had nothing to say about it. Right now, SK Gaming has this recovery going for them. Now, their Sov is done, but so is Potato Boys. And actually, Dirty's on the left-hand side having some trouble with Reels, who is doing oh, very well this what time. is this? Thor's going into the air crit, rains down, finds Badger, good combo, but he's too tanky, should be able to get away, and sleepy time for these two boys as the serenade puts them to bed. Now Arrow is in the area, could potentially turn on to Twig, but I think the Aegis is available, and actually the minion explosion is going to be enough to force Arrow away. Twig just doing explosive damage off of that combo. Uh, Captain Twig did lose some of his stacks, still sitting on about 30. And strangely now, he's looking at a Golden Sash. Now, yeah. this could be Gem of Isolation for that global slow. Wouldn't mind it. it could be an E-Staff. In my opinion, way too late to go for the Warlock Sash. He'll yeah. never get it stacked. What I would like to see is, where's the Chronos Pendant? Well, okay, so he is going to go by Warlock Sash, and he finishes it just at the 16-minute mark, which I think is, like, right on the end of yeah. the reasonable time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So he's wagering on his team team putting him in a good enough position that he can keep that stacking. We'll see how that ends up turning out. The other thing I want to mention is the defensive build from Hercules coming out here. After he gets his boots, he's going to use Silver Talisman into Runeforge Hammer, two very efficient items. Right, and next up is Jotun's, which means he's going to have more healing online. He has gone into Creeping Curse. This will be built into Weakening to sure uh, that Proxy kind of reduces the healing overall. Fire Shard's not doing enough damage in any lane just yet to get the kill. Sun Touch very low as Reels chases him down. Dirgius trying to save this one, but he doesn't quite find it, only stunning the support. Durgius gets his ult off, but it's not going to deter. Two free kills. Here comes the dive. Yeah, unfortunately, adapting lands oh, just oh. inside. Oh, Kraken coming out, but turned around arrow. Destroyed so quickly. Adapting will find the snipe with his Mjolnir's attunement, and Reels goes down. Interesting to note, usually we see Athena combos coming off of characters like Loki, where they can hard engage, or dare I say, even the Thor off of the Anvil of Dawn. Sure. This has been all Reels and actually adapting. Forced back, and left tower could be in trouble. Oh, oh! oh. Can he find it? Needs one shot. Turret's gonna do it! Zero's not Can't relying on his own ability. Just says, hey, I can auto-aim with this ability. This there you go. safe. Sergius and Suntouch have respawned to find their entire team who attempted to save them have been brought down. Maniac on the right side finds a kill, of course, onto Proxy as well, who picks that up. They have Fire Giant contention here, but it doesn't look like they're going to go for it. Taking a look at the Graf's Cret, there is a huge difference now. 3,600 gold, that's a real lead. 8,000 experience, that is a real lead. SK Gaming could keep themselves in it for first seed by winning against Potato Boys, and they're looking primed to do it. I mean, the only thing going for Potato Boys right now 
is adapting, who's sitting 9-3-2 and two despite a losing team. That's absolutely incredible. Thor is Gars would be proud. Thor is difficult. Character. Thor is difficult, but Gars would be proud of this uh, <laughs> of this KDA as adapting is just killing it this game. That Ooh. said, I mean, Reel's doing very well as well. So far, I'm looking at Arrow here, and I, I don't see the Poseidon pick. I just don't okay. see it. I mean, it's not been working. In the last engagement, the Kraken wasn't even the kill. Mjolnir's attunement did more damage than the Kraken. Yeah. And, I mean, you don't pick Poseidon anymore for the rotations. He's fast, but he's not that fast. Yeah, he's, he's not fast compared to Yanis. You don't um, pick him for the cripples because there are so many gods that can shut down the movement of other gods just as well or better. You pick him for that ultimate, and when the ultimate isn't performing, it's just not a worth pick. Well, on the left-hand oh, side, geez. Suntouch gets dove again. Bacho will be forced to disengage from this tower, which will go down. The Kraken going to... Just get Aegis by Twig yet again, and Reel's actually forced out, but adapting will fall to Twig. Reel's coming back in just for a little Look bit of poke, and now Arrow ring. is stuck between Tower and a hard place. The Earthshaker doesn't connect. That would have been a cool kill, but we're going to see another cool kill as yeah, Badger's, Badger's clean it up. Right there, I would have liked a more aggression from Reels as the Earthshaker came out. They could have sure. cleaned that up a little bit faster, but there's a limit to how much you can ask of these players. I mean, the way they played that was... Very, very close to flawless. Raining in on the right side. You're going to see more pressure coming to Durgius. Proxy, nowhere in sight going for that shot. Boulder going to miss. Durgius gets sent back in, but it's a 2v2, and they have the healing on their side for the Potato Boys, but here comes Zeros. Yeah, Zero is going to be the first real damage dealer at this engagement, but Suntouch following suit, not in a particularly good spot, but will find a decent pillar sign. Unfortunately, diminishing returns just too strong, and Maniac actually going to be diving the Phoenix, looking to turn on to Suntouch. Fire, tar uh, fire shards will connect. And the Sun Touch is forced out, only having 300 health. Now Proxy, under the mid-tower, finds a snipe, but he's not going to find a way out of that one. They put way too much damage right there into Hercules. It's just not a good idea. Yeah. He takes a lot. I mean, you, you can see that he's not as tanky as he could be. And now out of mana, will be forced to escape, but they just put almost every ability into a god that is famed for not dying. Yeah, I mean, especially the beginning of the engagement was Athena, Hercules versus Kabraken and Tank Ra. So <laughs> no one was doing anything, but... Now a little bit of pressure on the gold tree from Potato Boys. They're actually looking for zeros here, and they're going to play Ring Around the Rosie, but adapting as a teleport, so he's going to be able to cut that one off. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take a break from these. This real, is he triple stacking? Uh, yes. He is actually, I don't hate that on the wow. legendary triple stack. Reels in the back. Is he going to find Durgius? Yes, just barely finds wow. him and gets out. Actually, oh, 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 <laughs> oh, he wanted that, the red buff. That's so greedy. Oh my god, that was the greediest thing I've seen in like six months. There was no reason to do that Shing whatsoever. Would be proud. Oh, Shing is sitting in his chair somewhere going, I should have watched that. Yeah, I should have thought of that one. <laughs> but Arrow in a lot of trouble. Kraken comes out. It's just going to CC Maniac who gets the kill nonetheless on the right-hand side. Meanwhile, your triple stack split push Nuwa going ham and should be taking a Phoenix. She's already at 71 stacks. Yeah. That's actually crazy. This Phoenix is dead. She has minions blowing this thing up. I would have liked her to save the minions a little bit while... Actually, you know what? I didn't realize that she had that much damage. Holy hell. The Phoenix is down. Adapting a little bit too late there. Not quite adapting to the situation. Trying to find some damage. Captain Twig foolishly puts himself in the melee range. But even with Durgius' rotation, Adapting did not want any part of that. Escapes, uh, giving his team more chances to push. But they get the Phoenix there. So it's important to remember that Nuwa has an increased attack speed relative to other mages, and with this triple stack build and a red buff, you're looking at 471 magic power with 1.34 attacks per second, which means a very quick Phoenix kill despite relatively low penetration. Currently sitting 73 stacks on his Warlock Sash, he is actually not far from perfect stacking. Yeah, he's about 40 stacks away from having all of those things finished, which is actually crazy. Like you said before, 471 now increases to 478. Now, next item on the on the on the docket, it's got to be Chronos Pendant Rod. Sure. Right? No. Oh my God, he goes directly into a full hide of the urchin. That is brilliant because this ensures that a, if you die near me, I'm now stacking. It. Is he just trolling? I don't know. That's but a stacking item. That is a stacking item, but this build is also actually pretty good. The it's really mention, good. So we said that he bought the Warlock Sash at 16 minutes, right? Right. Perfect stacking on a Warlock Sash is 8 minutes and 30 seconds. Left hand side, though, Suntouch getting oh, absolutely destroyed geez. really quick. Reels will try and turn it around as Adapting shows up. Adapting is pretty fed, but with Badger here, I don't think he's got a good shot at 
really getting this kill on Reels. And you notice the fire shards, just to show Reels he has the ability to keep going. Zeros in the back gets done. Proxy with a good snipe, but not enough damage. Adapting, trying to get out of there. Slowed. Shield wall. No taunt just yet. He will. Oh, actually, he stops the dodge, but he's going to be forced out once again. Badger took a lot there in the backside. Not too much going on just yet until Maniac should. Did he miss that? No, it was Beads in the air. Beads from Proxy. So good reaction time in the middle lane. Split push. Nuwa is continuing her job. 84 stacks. And if he finishes this item in 45 seconds, he'll have hit the perfect second mark. Maniac. Not tanky enough to live through that. Yeah, well, he still burned a lot. And then look at the mid lane. Mm -hmm. Does she have the time on her rotating over? Poseidon rotating over. She backs off. He is farming so well this game, though. Captain... Oh, I. you know what I love about this urchin? The global assist presence from the ultimate. Oh, of course. Right? This is brilliant. Twig, thank Twig's you. Twig's actually a genius. Joust players. Oh, man. Seriously. Maniac and Twig, two of the most notable Joust players in the entire world. And what's crazy is you think of the number one, number two, number three masters. Yeah. Almost every single one of those gods, and I hate using this word, they use cheese strats. Yeah. They go like, you know, Poseidon attack speed and things that can backdoor towers. Twig and Maniac basically Just play, beat you. They play random. Yeah. Like, they play whatever they feel like, and they still win because they just outplay their opponents. Of course, they will lose to meta time and time again, but most of the time they're playing ridiculous things that lose matchups, and they still win. Unbelievable play coming out so far from T Twig, and this is so cool to see because he kind of slept through the SPL. We didn't see the explosive performance from the launch tournament and the uh, initial um, season going into that. Twig just... Not yeah, that really kickoff land, through. he was a god. Yeah, exactly. Well, speaking of gods, fire shards coming down. A lot of damage finds a kill and a stack, of course, for that height of the urchin. Full uh, stacks. They're trying to go for this. Durgius not getting the slow he's looking for. Still has his ultimate online. Could go for it. Really blocked him into a bad spot here. Oh, perfect wall, but real still able to pick that one up. On the backside, Zeros is running away from Berserker Barrage, but he can't run from the hammer. And adapting, able to get that kill. 11, 4, and 3, despite what's happening with the rest of his team. Durgy is forced to disengage Proxy, trying to hold his ground. We should mention 100 stacks hit from the new Wa. Right. Roughly 45 seconds late versus perfect stacking, which is incredible in a competitive game. Especially at 16 minutes. That was way past laning phase. Hercules throws the boulder. Proxy not taking too much, but the right side tower almost dead. Mid side Phoenix already gone. And look at the damage they're able to put forth. Only three people on the Potato Boys left. Durgius is going to be forced to escape here in just a second. Doesn't have a lot of control, and Proxy is just not swinging. Well, Maniac will just walk away, but this right Phoenix, yeah, very low. It is a half health, half damage Phoenix, so the max value is half of a full strength Phoenix at the start of a game. Maniac will get stunned out. Nice driving strike to avoid some damage, and he's got his heal active, but he's not going to be able to get to it as he's taken down rather quickly. Now the Kraken coming out, but it's not going to do too much. Reels in the mix, adapting, not going to connect either. Does get that one. Durgius will get the kill, but it was adapting stun that made it happen. Now Baja lands in a bad spot. You know, honestly, SK right there was just feeling themselves. Yeah. Straight up. They, Way they, too much. We can go one in at a time against four people on a Phoenix. Like, it's just not going to happen, boys. They got greedy. They paid for it. Captain Twig will escape with his Doom Orb stacks. And a speed buff. Right. He is fully stacked on Book of Thoth. He is fully stacked on Warlocks. He is fully stacked on Doom Orb. And now, high to the Urchin. One out of ten. Not great. Fire Shards. Fire shards, Fire shards, yeah, and it's actually going to do about oh. 462 to everyone. Suntouch. No penetration just yet. Captain Twig, can he turn it around? Doesn't get the explosion they need. Stunned out. That's the combo. That's the kill. More stacking for oh, Twig on the back side. Zero is fine one. Look at that. Beautiful Earthshaker for Suntouch into a, 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 a lose-lose situation using the meatball properly. Wow. Actually finds Durgius in the back. The Aegis was a little bit too early. He is to the gods. He I mean, why not? He almost got out of that. Yeah, I mean, almost, but... He was still pretty dead. Either way, SK Gaming in resounding control of this game. They're still up 10,000 gold and 14,000 experience. Anytime they want it, the Fire Giant is theirs. They just need some people to respond and maybe a few more stacks out of Captain Twig, whose last item will be the Tahuti. Wait a second. I just noticed. Doom Orb, Urchin, Warlocks all give mana. All That's of which true. augment the Book of Thoth stacks. This is, and then Hide of the Urchin also gives health, making him even tankier given the fact that he has Warlock. This build is ridiculously good. 
Yeah, I mean, the thing is, the 600 mana that he gets from the Warlock Sash... Uh, okay, so it's about 850 total. 3% of 850, not Oh, I'm sorry, wait. Much. Thor just came back down here. It looks like SK still able to pick up the Fire Giant. Maniac actually picks up Arrow! And we're going to see Adapting trying to pick up a kill, but failing uh, right there into the background. Reel's getting a little bit too aggressive. Oh, Durgius missed. Proxy has a chance here. Durgius picks it up. Yeah, Durgius able to get that kill, and now the fight rages on. Now, Fire Giant has gone to SK, but... They don't really have any carries left to do anything with adapting, pulled, Maniac can't quite get the kill. Great use of Tremors, will just try and interrupt Ooh. that as Suntouch bursted down real quick. T Twig in the mix, and he's going to try and keep it going on to Proxy, it looks like. Badger giving chase should have that preemptive strike. M Maniac healing a lot here, not only from Mitigate Wounds, but of course uh, does have that Fire Giant buff active. Proxy trying to escape, he's dashing forward, goes right for adapting. I don't know how I feel about this, he's going to take a lot, and he didn't heal himself enough going into this he should be picked up for free yeah that's just not the right situation proxy will be forced to use an aegis pendant and back off and well at least twig still has fire giant and Badger. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Twig gaining a lot of extra damage there. Um, it looks like given the fact that his in-hand gold's over 1,000 and he's not backing, he's going to go right for Rod here, not for the Kronos Pendant, which means their next engagement after that's finished, they're going to look to end. That Generally, with Nuwa, you're building CDR because you want to get those Fire Shards off mm -hmm. as much as possible. In this case, he is just looking to shove it down as fast as possible. Yeah, I would like to see some pen, but I think he just likes having stacks from that urchin, so we'll see what happens late game. I also want to talk about Badge's build. Midas Boots into Sovereignty, that's a no-brainer. Stone of Guy is really great for the sustain, Magi's Blessing, even a Wing Blade just to give you that little extra movement speed and cooldown reduction. Speaking of which, Breastplate of Valor to roughly cap it out. It'd be close. Pretty, yeah, I mean, 35% is good enough. Yeah. And so Badger, and with the uh, with the blue buff, it'll cap it. But so Bla Badger's build is really good at this point in the game, and this is sort of where Athena can actually become very strong. Dirgy is pretty similar, but has gone into Golden Sash. Expect this to be a gem of oh, isolation. Yeah. Oh, um, Ethereal. Uh, no, he goes Ethereal Staff. Okay, so he's looking to augment his health. Uh, that's going to affect Wing Blade. It's going to affect Magi's Blessing. And, of course, Sovereignty. There's a lot of health in this build. I kind of expect a gem of ISO, because then yeah. it makes Tremors, like, a really good move. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely, definitely does, but his tremors have been okay, and sitting around 4,000 health, he's going to get a pretty substantial amount from the Ethereal Staff, so it definitely will augment his abilities a lot, and honestly, Kabrakin is pretty good uh, ratios when you add up all of his abilities. His damage is very high. Yeah. I mean, if you get hit by his 1-2 combo, even when he's building tank, like, you're going to feel that. I mean, last item Stone of Guy on this kit would actually just be insane, because you're yeah. dealing... Out of 4,000. Right. Not to mention it's an extra 100 health that he's putting in on top sure. of that. You know, but that 2% over 5 seconds, like, that's that's no joke. No, it's not. If you wait 40 seconds, it becomes a Gauntlet of Thebes, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, in the middle lane, the mid lane Phoenix has respawned. It is a weaker Phoenix, as is the one on the right-hand side. But SK hasn't been able to find the fight they need just yet. Durge is in the back. Ooh, too trying early. to brawl. And Arrow will be able to get back to his fountain. Maniac a little bit too early right there. Droving, uh, driving strike uh, just a bit before the beads ran off. Arrow with a good ultimate. Not going to do enough damage. Reels taking a lot there as they go back. And there's the fire shards. Not only doing a lot, but forcing them to a bad spot. Reels right into proxy gets picked off. That's going to be a one for one. There goes the third as Maniac actually falls. Again, Hercules getting over aggressive. Yeah, now Zero, speaking of overaggression, uh -oh. dies in a horrible position. Just backing off is Badger and Twig. They're not closing this game out, and eventually, Potato Boys will be able to gain a little bit of ground. It's not really the kind of situation where they can get a Fire Giant off of that mistake, but right, I think that's why I something. like it. That's what. That's why I like the rush into the into the time yeah. there. They knew that if they died there, no, their Twig. timers would level out. Twig could be in some trouble there, uh, not quite using his everything to his advantage just yet because he's waiting on Badger, taking a little bit. Nice Aegis, but they're forcing into him. He's not getting out of that one. Yeah, not going to get out of that one as Durgius will find the kill. Badger backing off. Now does not quite yet have that max CDR, so he will be waiting uh, over a minute on his ultimate. Mid tower is going to go down. So 500 gold back to Potato Boys. They might get another 1,500. They're able to get something off this, and actually now Badger getting aggressed on, but with mission returns, he'll be fine. That's right. Um, I'm really surprised to see Dirty is not trying to lock him in there. Yeah. Picking him off would have guaranteed the Fire Giant aggression. Because looking across the way, uh, I don't see that Hand 3 coming out. Maniac has Hand of the Gods, but it's Hand 1. Uh, and really nobody else has built it except for Zeros, but that's a fist. So on the right-hand side, Arrow got caught lazy backing. Will need to use his beads. His reels shows up. But honestly, Badger just walked up and kind of hit him. 
It's like, hey, <laughs> hey, don't back here. Cut that out. Yeah. It's no back zone. It is. And I'm so he, he actually has to use sprint and... Uh, How many times do you think we've seen a game thrown by lazy back? It honestly... Ha I, I did it once against Root. I want to give a shout out to Shing. Yeah. Shing, king of all lazy backs. That's cool. Sh it's, Shing and Jerb. It's his thing. Shing and Jerb, always shopping. Yep. Always shop. Shouldn't do that in a competitive game, but at the same time, you have to get back as far as possible. So, Dirgius now finally sitting on that 4,000 health mark. Going to go into a spirit robe last item. I like it. Just to be the tankiest person he can possibly it's be. It's more health. It's magical protection. It's uh, increased overall protections given the fact that he'll gain 15% damage reduction yeah. on hard CC. No shell from either team, which is uh, kind of infuriating to me. Durgius should veer away from the spirit robe and get that shell online ASAP. He should probably buy a second active, honestly. Yeah, just uh, this is 34 minutes in the game. Like, come on, guy. Some Salvation. No, not something. Meditation. Stop. Stop. <laughs> anyway, adapting the right-hand side will be caught out. Just auto-attacking Badger thanks to the taunt, but the damage follow-up doesn't connect. Zeros will land in the Kraken, and that's the downside to Aegising early. It Reels is able to find Sun Touch and now engaging in the fight, but bursted down by Proxy. Oh, look at the Dirgius wall blocking off the escape path. Badger trying to get out. Twig rotating in, throws in some damage, but will take some of his own. Adapting, not finding a way out. Dirgius' wall has actually blocked him off from the aggression to pick off Captain Twig as he's able to rotate around the backside. Check out the lazy back once again. Twig just barely getting out of there. Dodges the shining metal. Adapting, trying to find the stun. Doesn't find the double tap. Gonna get taunted away, but stuns instead, relying on Durgius to try to find it, but I think that one's gonna be his death sentence. Yeah, Proxy just too far away in that situation. The snipe will connect, but can Ooh. they kill Batcha? Great use uh, great use of that absorb pass. Oh, turning Durgius, onto Mania, please. Not finding the auto attacks from his Four one. Four times. Missed it. Four times. One was the absorb. So we can give him that one, but yeah, that just shouldn't happen. Whoosh, that was rough. At the very least, Athena's Absorb doesn't remove uh, the Kabrakens buff. 1, right. which would be awful, but yeah, not really happening there. And this game just, it won't end. Neither of these teams can find the situation they need to really make anything significant happen. It's just trading back and forth sort of halfway up the field. Right there, the Potato Boys were able to stall out long enough to get that Phoenix back. The final wave of fire minions are getting burned down in the mid lane by proxy. Uh, no trouble whatsoever there, so that's going to be worked back up. Even with the split push potential of Nuwa, they have had a very hard time closing this one out. Yeah. But we're into the Fire Giant phase once again. Expect the teams to group up. I love the red buff. I think it's very strong at this stage in the game, but there's a limit to how many people you can send over there during the Fire Giant. It's contention. very true. The other thing to mention is Captain Twig has sold his Doom Orb for the Obsidian Shard in the late game, which he Love sort of it. needs to do because of Love the penetration. It. That said, because the urchin, his build is a little bit lower on damage than actually some of the other new odd builds that we have seen. Sun Touch forced to disperse away as Durgius gets his sights kind of turned to. Uh, Maniac not doing any damage there. Saves it. Pushed back by Sun Touch. Let's look at the damage. Maniac taking a lot. Yeah, Earthshaker will connect oh. 1,200 on a proxy with the boulder. That's going to be the kill. Maniac Bye. will start healing back up, adapting, destroyed as well. Durgius has finally been poked down to zero from 4K and reels with the Apollo. It looks like SK was like, all right, game's taking too long. Let's just end it. Right there, you got to look to zeros. Perfect Earthshaker finds enough damage for the fire shards to really shut everything down. They let Nua get too big. She's a ticking time bomb. Eventually, if your team doesn't have healing, it's just going to be 60% of everyone's health. Right there, boom. No problem. Five kills for zero. SK ties it up with Aquila, and they go to the tiebreaker. Can't wait to see what's going to happen in that match, but let's talk about this one. And zeros on this Vulcan came out huge. He did a great job with the Earth Shakers and basically was the factor that created such good engage in that last team fight. It's so cool to see an unconventional pick that's done because the player is so good at it. But then the other player, Maniac, doing so well. So Maniac gets a line to Durgius in the end yeah. and doesn't take it. And then that's exactly what this replay is going to show. He's smart. He recognizes what his cooldowns mean at this point. Now, you watch Badger in the background. Goes in, he's like, hey, I got this. Actually, I don't like Sun Touch right now. I don't know why. I just really hate Sun Touch. He uses everything that he can to just absorb damage. Zeros lands the big hit. There comes the boulder. Perfect bounce to the back line. Fire Shard's doing a ton of damage. Maniac cleanly walking away, starts to heal up, no problem whatsoever. And it was so cool to see the way that they set up the Earthshaker off of the curse. 
Creeping Curse is going to just slow things around. But right. let's take a look at the scoreboard right now. 5-1 to one Aquila, 5-1 to one SK Gaming. They will be facing off in a tiebreaker. Potato Boys have gone 2-4. and four, And Team Coast 0-6. Oh they almost beat Aquila. They did. It was very, very close. Potato Boys needed to win both games. Yeah. They instead lost both. We have one more game today, and that's going to be SK Gaming and Aquila. Now, remember, guys, they are tied. If they, The winner of this will come in as the fifth seed as opposed yeah. to 60 going into the LAN, which means they face off against Cloud9. Loser of this will face off against Team Solo Mid. But honestly, this tiebreaker to me yeah. means very close to, to, very close to nothing because... You fight TSM or you fight C9. Either way, you're They're not going to have a good, good morning. Very different play styles, though, so maybe they can you know, true. pick based on that. But we'll be back in just a few minutes with the tiebreaker game in the EU wildcard.